Welcome back, everyone, to in- the Inside the Dam podcast, sponsored by Papa John's. I'm Alex Coons, and today we have another three inter- interviews for you guys. We'll have Isaiah Bigby, a defensive back for the football team, Cameron Dumpy, a guard on the men's basketball team. But starting off with us tonight, I have Kate Head, senior point guard on the women's basketball team here with me. Kate, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so um, this past week, you were named the NSIC player to watch. Congratulations. That must be a very exciting accomplishment for you. Thank you. Yeah, it's always um, you know, fun to have those little things named and like those things of recognition. Yeah. I guess it's always fun. <laughs> Congratulations again. Um, so this is your fifth year, but your third year with the Beavers, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what... Are you most excited for the season? You've got a lot of incoming players, but also quite a few returners, as well as um, your coach's second year with the program. Talk to me a little bit about what you're feeling. Um, it's really mostly just all excitement. It's really fun having um, a lot of new people come in. And, you know, with new people, there's always a lot of uh, a lot of energy and enthusiasm because, like, mm-hmm. this is their first time around. They're just so excited to get going. Yeah. And it's really been showing in practice. It's a lot of energy and competitiveness and that's definitely like a main thing and having the coaching staff here like the second time around now it's not completely brand new to everyone there's people that can still um guide the newcomers with the returners from last season so it's been a really good mix awesome (laughs) that's exciting so like you said um there's people returning at like you um as an upperclassman is it is it weird being an upperclassman like you are like a fifth year senior? Does it, is it like, like, is it, do you feel pressure? What do you feel? Um, I mean, there's definitely pressure as a fifth year because um, people automatically look at that on a roster and say, oh, well then they've got experience. Mm. Um, but yeah, there's definitely like pressure in that sense, I guess. But yeah, you know, you just got to take it as what it is and just go with it and not let it get yeah. to you and just play each game as they come and not really think about those things, I guess. Yeah, for sure. So um, you did say that there, like you, there are, are returners and the incoming freshmen and the coaching staff is all returning. Um, so talk to me a little bit about your team culture and what um, this new season is going to do with the team culture. Um, yeah, so our head coach, Coach Brandt, he has very particular um, – details that he likes to like put into our culture like um I don't know if you guys are familiar but put your foot over the line when you're running drills and things Mm -hmm. like that and the supporting coaching staff are really they've really bought into that and our new GA coach Ander she is also very detailed and so it's been a really good fit right away honestly and all of our players have really bought into it and um it's really been showing like it's been a process to like grow and learn those habits that mm-hmm. come from the team culture that Coach Brandt's trying to put in. But it's such a difference, like night and day difference from where we started. And I, I find that really exciting that That's we're awesome. all like on board and yeah. into the culture. Yeah. Um, so since this is your fifth year, is are you going to return after this or is this your final season? Um, <laughs> yeah, this is, well, plans are this is my final yeah. season. Yeah. So do you have any personal goals for this season that you'd like to accomplish as like the final hurrah with the Beavers? Yeah, definitely. Um, Well, first and most importantly is just our team being competitive in the conference and making it to the Pentagon and the playoffs. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, really been an emphasis from the start, having, like, making it clear to these newcomers, like, hey, we're not coming in just to play. Like, we're coming here to really show up and compete and make it to these championship level um, teams, you know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and Like, this isn't a goal I'd like to focus on individually. I like to more focus on the team goals. But I guess, like, trying to strive for all conference selections and that type of thing is also um, a focus of mine. But I really just want to focus on, like, the team goals first. Yeah, of course. (laughs) That's super exciting. Um, Well, congratulations on the player to watch. That's awesome. Thank you. And thank you so much for being here. Um, Next up, we'll have um, Isaiah Bigby and Cameron Dumphy, but for now, that is all. Thanks so much for being here.
Welcome back to Inside the Damn Podcast, brought to you by Papa John's. Don't forget the MSU special, six ninety nine for a large two topping pizza. Excuse me, seven ninety nine. Um, today I have with me a very special guest, redshirt senior and starting guard for the men's basketball team, Cameron Dunphy. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thanks. So I just want to start off by asking, like, how did your, how did basketball bring you to Minot State? So, I started my high school journey in Texas. Then my junior year, I moved to Denver. And then I was coached by a really good coach. He played in the NBA for like 13 years. Oh, nice. So his name's Earl Boykins. He's a little guy. He's pretty well-known. But played for him for two years. He got me into like some showcases. And then I actually went to a JUCO in Montana, like four hours from here. Yeah. Then Merkin saw me, talked to him. Then COVID hit. He showed a lot of love. And then I just trusted the process I ended up in my night nice and did you know kind of like what major you were going to choose before you came here honestly I didn't I had no idea so what what did you end up choosing so I'm actually a triple major so oh wow so this is my fifth year so I'm doing management marketing and international business so yeah I just kind of business is a general degree so I figured yeah that. so a triple major like that's got to be a lot to handle right honestly it's not as bad as I thought it would really be. yeah no it was a uh, first four years like a lot of the general stuff. Mm-hmm. Then these last two semesters, I'm basically getting a major done each semester. So. Yeah. So w- what are you planning to do with all those degrees after college? I don't know. I plan to play pro for a few years. Oh, nice. Then whatever. I don't know, honestly. Are you thinking about going overseas or staying in the States? Uh, probably overseas. The States is a... Uh, do you have any idea where you'd want to go? Anywhere that pays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> anywhere that's going to get the bills paid. Yeah. So this could be college, high school, middle school, elementary, but what's your favorite basketball memory and why? Oh, man. (laughs) You know what? I have a special place for my JUCO, and uh, we won a regional championship. Oh, wow. But I don't know. My first year here, we went to the Pentagon, and we made it further than any minor state team before. Wow. So we won. I think we went to the Final Four or Elite Eight or something. But I had 30, and we beat Upper Iowa, who was ranked, to get there. And it was just a really cool game. It was a good experience. That's Scored crazy. my 1,000th point in that game, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Would you say that there's, like, any NBA players, like, growing up that have kind of, like, created the kind of play style that you play with? Like, have you matched that play style of any NBA players? Um, I watched a lot of Kobe, but I wouldn't yeah. say like Kobe. But <laughs> <laughs> well, no one is, but yeah, exactly. I see what you're saying, though. Yeah. I Starting basketball, I could barely dribble. I was always just a mm-hmm. shooter. I would stand in the corner. It wasn't till two, three years ago I just started developing more skills. Yeah. So I don't I don't really know. I kind of just shaped late, honestly. Well, while we're talking about your basketball skills, I want to bring up that you led the nation last year in free throw percentage at 95%, which is an outstanding number. Um, so how much work have you like put into specifically just shooting free throws over the years? Honestly, a lot. Uh, I don't like to just walk in the gym and shoot three, so I always do like some form shooting, but yeah. I probably shoot 50 to 100 free throws before practice starts. Like, nice. that's just what I shoot to start. Oh, that's awesome. just a lot. Yeah. Um, okay, now I'm going to point out the obvious here. You were named the NSIC player to watch for Minot State this year. How does it feel to receive that kind of recognition from such a high standing conference? I mean, it feels good, it does, but I feel like at the same time, it really doesn't mean anything. It's just going to mean that there's going to be more defense and more scout towards me. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of just like, well, let's figure it out and work from there. It's not yeah. really – I don't see it as, like, the highest honor because that's – our team goal wasn't just for old Cam's player to watch. It's to go win. So that's yeah. That's where I see it. I don't – yeah, I'm not – So you're a big team it. guy rather big than team just looking team for first. yourself. That's yeah. awesome. Looking back on last year's season – um, how did it feel to beat the number six nationally ranked University of Minnesota Duluth? That was a huge game for you guys, and you guys came out on top. Yeah, honestly, our coach preaches like take the punch to them, like don't don't get hit first. Yeah. And within like the first ten minutes of the game, they kind of just folded. Like, mm-hmm. so we ended up winning by like twenty. It was just from start to be, to from start to finish. It was just a great game for us. Yeah. It was, it was just really fun to play in. Yeah. And do you feel like because they were so like highly ranked that you guys might have brought a little bit more to the table that game? Or do you try to kind of keep it balanced throughout the entire season? The goal is always to be even keel. You yeah. Know, just never too high, never too low. But like one of my teammates just told me, he said, we'd rather be the hunter than be hunted. 
Yeah. Do you have that chip on your shoulder? You have. We have nothing to lose if we're not supposed to win. Oh yeah. So that's yeah. I think that's a great way to say it. So, were there any plans or goals you had for yourself or the team this off season in preparation for your last season here at Minot State? Personally, I just I wanted to put on weight. I've had a yeah. lot of bodies bumping into me, so I mm-hmm. think personally putting on weight was big. I put on like 15 pounds. This oh, time. nice. Yeah, but we just want to win. I don't know. Like personally, I want to be all conference, but mm-hmm. at the same time, that's not my end goal. I would rather win than have personal attributes or whatever. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. So finally, I'll ask you, how excited are you for this upcoming season? I'm really excited. We got a lot of new guys. We got, I think, four or five JUCO transfers, some freshmen. We got some guys who haven't even played yet who were here last year. I think we'll be really good. We're a completely different team. We're a little more athletic, a little more fast. I know defensively we'll be a lot better. I think it'll be a good year for us. Mm-hmm. And are there any like matchups in the NSIC that you are looking forward to or that will be really exciting games to go watch? I think the U Mary game, they beat us twice last year. And I think we were a better team, but they unfortunately beat us twice. I think we have a chip on our shoulder and we'll come out and beat U Mary twice this year. But I think the higher teams in the conference, like the Duluths and Upper Iowas, I think those are the games that are going to really show who we are. Yeah, definitely. All right, last question here for sure. What's your favorite NBA team and why? Oh, Lakers. And why? <laughs> I grew up in California for a little bit and I've always been a Kobe fan, so Lakers. Awesome. Good to hear it. That's Cameron Dumphy, the starting guard for the Beavers and NSIC player to watch for Minot State. And he's very excited for this upcoming season. Stay tuned as we have Cole Clementich with a member of the football team. He has a good story to share. You're listening to the Inside, Inside the Dam podcast sponsored by Papa John's.
Alrighty, welcome back to the Inside the Dam podcast brought to you by Papa John's. Again, MSU special. Check it out, $7.99 for a large two-topping pizza. We thank Admir and the gang over there going on at Papa John's. And we appreciate Gage and Alex with Cameron Dunphy and Kate Head today. They were great guests, lots of great stories to tell. But now we bring you the last segment of the show. He is a defensive back, a linebacker on the MSU football team here on campus. Isaiah Bigby joins us now. Isaiah, thank you for being here today with us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so truth be told, you had a major injury last year trying to get back on the field torn ACL I asked you about this earlier but just talk about those first moments getting back on the field what did that feel like uh it was so surreal like um it was just exciting to be able to walk out and be in between the lines again um honestly I mean there was a point there probably at like the four month period of my ACL journey I was like I don't know if I'll play football again so just being out there was like it was crazy I remember after the game I definitely cried though I was like man like it's been a long road back so it was nice for sure. Yeah, it had to be a surreal moment there. And just talk about, you have two interceptions, correct, this year? Yeah, two. Two, and then three just overall in the career. Talk about that first interception back from injury. Again, just simply put, how did that feel? Um, it was wild. Actually, like, the play was going, and I didn't think I was going to get the ball. A uh, kid was just running, like, a lazy fade route, and I was like, oh, this is, like, kind of boring. And then his eyes got real big, and I looked behind, and then the ball was there. And then um, I just had the ball the next minute, I knew. But that was wild, too. And like, it feels good. It feels like I did rehab right. So, good bounce back. No, that's awesome. A amazing bounce back indeed. And just tell us about your rise, not only as a player, but also as a leader on the field. You know, you're one of the big communicators on that defense. Just tell us a little bit about that. Um, it was just crazy. Like, as soon as I came in, it kind of felt that way my freshman year. Um, I got thrust into starting my first game. And, like, I was playing safety. And at that time, safety's made all the checks. So, I had to be super vocal. And um, I mean, like by week five, everybody was just kind of looking at me to make checks and like speak on team issues and stuff like that. And I was just kind of thrust into it. And um, I just took it on, you know, as a, as a job, as a role and just trying to help the team grow. And uh, I think the biggest thing was learning like um, sometimes being a better like being a better leader means I have to listen more. That was like the biggest thing for me I had to learn. So but um, it's been great. I just learn new things every day. Like I learn things about my teammates. They give me pointers. I give them pointers. It's just pretty cool. It's all about in the teamwork off the field, especially, and being able to get that call from the coaches as on making the shots on defensive adjustments, you know, trust from your coaches in your ears, you know, just talk about, you know, how honored are you to be having that at such a early stage in your career? Oh, extremely. I mean, not too many kids get to do it when they're younger. So, uh, like, that's a blessing on its own. Um, it's definitely super cool because I look around and, like a lot of the young guys are like, man, like, like, you're a young guy too, but you feel like an old head. And I'm like, man, like, <laughs> that's pretty dope. But, and then the older guys look up to you too as a young guy. And it's just, it's like I said, it's just so surreal. But that's how football works. Like, team sports in period, like, you can turn to the person you feel like either makes plays or um, has, a, like, a, a good voice that you can follow behind. And, like, in my opinion, I feel like anybody can say anything to me, and I feel like I'm going to take it as uh, the same level as, like, uh, face value or whatever, whether you don't play or you play all the snaps at all, so. Yeah, so certainly a lot of good stuff there on the field. Let's go a little bit off the field. You're originally from Vegas, and just talk about what it's like growing up there and, you know, your first interest in playing football. You know, what was that like in your past? Uh, it's super hot, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, like I said, it's a fast-paced lifestyle. Like, you're kind of just kind of always ripping and running, ripping and running, ripping and running, seeing new things every day. Um, so being out here is kind of nice, just having a slower-paced lifestyle. You know, I can go outside, like, I might stand in the middle of the street and I see a car for a couple minutes. That's pretty dope. So, but um, I actually started playing basketball when I was like four, and um, because my dad played basketball at UNLV, so it was kind of like growing up they thought I could play Ooh. basketball. Yeah. <laughs> so then um, I just remember I was at school one day and they were playing football, and I was like, that looks interesting. Like, and I wanted to play. And then like I think like three weeks later I was in football and I just left basketball behind until I got to high school. So. And it certainly paid off in the end there as you're now playing some big-time college football, especially even in the toughest Division II conference. Like, that's still 
you know, a pretty big accomplishment. And, you know, what do you do for your downtime, you know, being from Vegas and, you know, it's certainly, you know, party city, obviously, um, even when you're down there, but also when you're up here, you know, what are some things that you like to do kind of in your free time a little bit? Um, back home, I guess you could say free time, I guess. I go work out, so I have a trainer back there. He trains me for free, so I definitely take advantage of that. And then um, I'm just hanging out with my friends, uh, I mean, catching up. I make music in the downtime sometimes, like uh, every once in a while, you know, when I get bored. And then up here, it's more like um, just connecting with my teammates, you know, because that's why I'm with 75% of the year, <laughs> from spring ball to fall ball to weights to meetings. So you just get really close to them and just you just learn it's not really about where you're at as far as, like, being in my not. It's just about, like, who you're around and, like, the people you're around make, like, your experiences better. Yeah, talk about the brotherhood a little bit. I've seen it in, I believe it was Coach Zier's office, and there's a little Ten Commandments in MSU Football Brotherhood. Just walk us through that a little bit. Oh, yeah, so those are a little uh, little newer. I don't know if I can name all ten, but um, they're just kind of things we live by. So, like, um, things when we're feeling down or looking looking at a bleak moment, like things we can look back to and remember, like, we can stand on those, and that's what we want to build our team around. So, like, um, like, one of them is being our brother's keeper. One is um, FTS, um, which is, like, forgetting that stuff like forgetting the old stuff you know mm -hmm. and then um also like um we have one that's called good just meaning like whatever situation you have like it's an opportunity to turn into a good situation and um polish the dam just taking care of your own stuff it's like there's 10 of them but i can only name like five right now cause I'm no that's fine no that this i think there's a lot of good stuff on there and I, you know i i kind of remembered a few but not quite as much as you but uh no that's really cool and you know, taking that, going back to the field a little bit, you know, taking that and applying it to playing, you know, in all the games that you've been around, you led the team in tackles as a freshman, you know, how did that, again, it's kind of like you were just telling us, you know, the team just kind of named you starter right there early and they had a lot of trust in you and, you know, how did that really come to be, have a breakout season? Were you expecting that at all? You know, what was that breakout season like for you? Um, I would say as much as I would love to say I wasn't expecting it. Um, I knew I had put in like a lot of work in the summer. Like that's what I wanted to do. Like I know that was my goal. Um, just to come in and start. I didn't have a goal of being like a team leading tackler. That's for sure. But that was kind of wild. I mean, it was just I was playing safety, and safeties were fit to make all the tackles and get all the balls. So I got kind of lucky in that aspect, I guess. No, that's certainly a lot of uh, good that was taking place for sure, and. You know, going back now, we're, we're going to go back to classroom life now. So that we'll be done with football chatter only for a little bit. But, uh, you know, what is life like in the classroom for you? You know, what are some majors, maybe my, some minors or concentrations? What are you studying on campus right now? So I'm a marketing and management double major. So I'm pretty decent with my mouth, I guess. I can pretty good <laughs> words. So, um, but I'm finishing up that. This semester, I graduate in the spring, and I think I'm going to come back for my grad degree because I have uh, two more seasons left. So we'll figure out how we're going to configure that out and everything else. But um, that's pretty much that. I like it. Helps to have that extra COVID year in there and an extra year of eligibility. I'm sure a lot of athletes are enjoying that, certainly, just like you are. And, uh, you know, tough season, obviously, you know, giving up multiple touchdowns and scores every game, you know, it, it's it's tough. I mean, what can you do really? You know, just kind of what are some late season expectations that you have for yourself, you know, for the team on the field and also just off the field? Uh, personally, for me, to make sure I go out and make sure that after each game, I can say I gave everything I had, make sure I left everything out there. Um, that's the one thing I really don't like is being able to walk out from a game and be like, man, like I left a couple plays out there. Like that's the worst feeling. I have no problem missing plays, but when I feel like I left a play, that kind of irks me, like bugs me for the week. And I say as a team, just making sure we're competing, like, you know, finishing through the whistle, playing through, and, um, like, believing you can win games. Like, you know, you can walk in. This conference is pretty crazy. Like, anybody can beat anybody at any time. So believing that and playing with that and um, just playing for the person next to you and the guy behind you and the, the coaches coaching you. Absolutely. And um, off the field, obviously, what are some plans for, you know, after the season, obviously, we're going to miss football season, us sports fans. But, you know, when it concludes, is there anything you're looking forward to on campus? Is there plans, like you mentioned, going to grad school? Um, just kind of walk us through some of your uh, personal beliefs or plans that you have for once the season gets done. 
Uh, so I'm kind of a football head. So I know when the football season's over, I'll take like my little two-week hiatus, and then I'm back to the lab trying to get better, like a lot of other things I have to sharpen up and get better at. But then I'm also excited for um, intramural basketball. You know, like oh, there you go to play some basketball again. Get um, some of that UNLV experience from your dad. Yeah, you know, that's right. <laughs> yeah, and then um, also just getting back to the spring, getting back to football again. You know, just kind of it's a nice little like 15 practice period where it's not too much, but it's enough to be like ah, I missed football. Like, um, and then I'm just excited to be like it sounds funny, but just to be like a normal student again. Just you know, wake up, go to class, come home. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of miss that sometimes. So. Yeah, real quick here, you know, spring ball's going to be coming up pretty soon. Obviously, if we're, we're still getting close to winter, but still a couple months away from that. But spring ball, you know, how much, how exciting is it really for, it's kind of an off season, but also not really, like you hear the term a lot that every day is not an off season or something. Like the NFL, there's always the draft, there's free agency, there's a whole bunch of stuff happening like every day doesn't feel like an off season you know what's your approach to spring ball here coming up pretty soon uh, it definitely feels that way I would say like we're kind of a year-round sport some would say but um spring ball is great because I mean like I said you get that little little three month four month period where you kind of just a lot of kids are going home working on their craft making sure they're getting better and then in the spring you get to see whether it paid off or not or what you need to work on still which uh what goals you feel like you accomplished and then you're back with your team so you guys are going through things and you're competing against each other. That's probably the best part. You're just competing against each other every day and uh, making each other better, uh, iron sharpening iron. And then you end it up and then you guys go into, roll into the summer and then roll into the fall. So, Awesome. Well, that's a lot of good stuff there, Isaiah. Thank you so much again. And that, that'll that be it. Uh, anything else you maybe want to mention? Uh, no, just thanks for having me. Yeah, just a uh, quick roll beeves there. And uh, yeah, thanks again. That was Isaiah Bigby, linebacker on the MSU football team. We also want to thank Cam Dunphy and Kate Head from the men's and women's basketball teams, also NSIC players to watch. Thank you to Janie, our tech person, and Emily for sitting in as well. That is going to do it. Again, I am Cole Clementich, your last host for the night. You just watch another good episode of Inside the Dam. Again, we are brought to you by Papa John's. Don't forget, MSU special, seven ninety nine large two-topping pizza. With that, thank you guys for watching, and we will see you next time.